Lesson 3.3, compare and order decimals with place value. If you missed 3.1 and 3.2, they're linked in the description. We can use place value to compare and order decimals by lining up the decimal points and using a place value chart. We compare the digits in each place starting from the greatest place value position. So we can line up their decimal points when we're comparing these two decimals and see that the greatest place value position is the tenths place. And this has a 2, which is greater than 0, so we know that 25 thousandths is less than 205 thousandths. If we're comparing decimals and the greatest place value positions contain the same digit, we move to the next lesser place value position to the right. We're comparing these two decimals. They both have a 0 in the 1's place. They both have a 3 in the 10th's place. They both have a 7 in the 100th's place. So we compare their thousands. And we can see that 375 thousands is greater than 372 thousands because it has a 5 in the thousands place. When we compare whole numbers, we start by comparing the greatest place value positions. We do the same with decimals. If we're comparing 163 to 162, they have the same digits in the hundreds and tens place, so we compare the ones place. When we compare 163 thousandths to 162 thousandths, we compare the ones place, the tenths place, the hundredths place, and they're the same, so we compare the thousandths place. We see 163 thousandths is greater than 162 thousandths. It's very important to line up the decimal points when comparing decimals. We need to line up the decimal points to make sure we're comparing the same place value positions. If we're comparing this four-digit number to this four-digit number, and we just line up their digits, these are not equal. We need to line up the decimal points, and we'll see that this has a 10 in the tens place as the greatest position. So 13 and 25 hundredths is greater than 1 and 325 thousandths. Comparing decimals beginning with the greatest place value position means we're comparing the digits from left to right. If we start right to left, any differences between the digits can be overcome by the differences of the digits to the left. So if we start here, we'll see that this digit is less, so we may think that this bottom decimal is less. And when we move to this place, we see it's still less, so we still think it's less. This digit in the tenths place is less, but when we get to the ones place, we see that actually this decimal is greater. If we had started here, we would have compared the ones place and we would have been finished. So it's really important to go from left to right from the greatest place value position. We can use a place value chart to compare decimals. We write the digits in their correct place value positions, then compare the digits starting from the greatest place value on the left. And if the digits are the same, we compare the next lesser place value to the right. We see they both have a 4 in the 1's place. 4 is equal to 4. 5 in the 10's place. 5 is equal to 5. But 7 is less than 9. We know that 4 and 577 thousandths is less than 4 and 597 thousandths. We can compare many decimals by using place value. We begin by stacking them with their decimal points lined up. We need to find which is the greatest of these decimals and which is the least. I mean, look, they all have a 7 in the 1's place. There are the same number of 1's, so we compare the 10th's place. This one has a 0 in the 10th's place, so it's the least. The rest have the same 10th's. They have a 1 in their 10th's place. So we compare the hundredths place. This has a 2, this has a 2, and this has a 3. And 7 and 132 thousandths has a 3 in the hundredths place, so this one is the greatest. That 3 is the greatest in the hundredths place. Stacking them up with their decimal points lined up can really help us. And we can order the decimals from least to greatest. We have the same decimal numbers we had before. 
we're going to order them from least to greatest, that means the least is going to be the first one and the greatest is going to be the last one. And we found that 7 and 23 thousandths was the least because it had a zero in the tenths place. And we can cross that one off because we've already found that it's the least. We know that 7 and 132 thousandths is the greatest because it has a 3 in the hundredths place. And we put it here. We can cross that off because we've placed it. And we can circle the place values that we're comparing if that will help us. They both have a 7 in the ones place. They both have a 1 in the tenths place. So we're comparing the hundredths place. This has a 2. This has a 0. And we're going from least to greatest, so 0 would be the next least. 7 and 103 thousandths would be the next least. This is the only one left, so we know it goes here into the third spot. And we can order decimals from greatest to least. We have these four decimal numbers. We stack them with their decimal points lined up, and the ones are the same, so we compare their tenths. We can see 2 and 201 thousandths has a 2 in the tenths place, so that's the greatest. And we're going from greatest to least, so that's going to be the first one we write. And that one's finished, so I crossed it off to make it easier for me. We can see that this number has a 0 in the tenths place, so it must be the least. 2 and 12 thousandths is the least. We write it over here. And we can cross it off also because we found where it went. Now we only have these two left. And when a digit is missing on the right side of a decimal, that place value is 0. If the tenths are the same, we compare the hundredths. And if the hundredths are the same, we compare the thousandths. And we can actually write in a zero here as a placeholder. And we can see this is 2 and 122 thousandths. This is 2 and 120 thousandths. So we know going from greatest to least, this would be the next greatest. And we would write it here. But we have to be careful when we write this one into our list. It did not have a zero originally, so when we write it here, we need to take this zero away and write it as 2 and 12 hundredths. We need to write them in their original form. If the digits to the left are greater, we can ignore the lesser place values. If we're comparing all of these decimal numbers, we see the ones are all the same. When we get to the tenths, this 9 sticks out. We know that that's the greatest one. It has the most tenths. So 3 and 922 thousandths is the greatest. And looking at the tenths, this one has a 4 in the tenths place. That's the least tenths. So 3 and 4 122 thousandths is the least. We found the greatest and least using only the tenths place. We didn't even need to look at the hundreds or thousandths because we were able to answer it with just the tenths place. We can name the greatest place value where the digits differ and the name of the greater decimal. We have these two decimals. They both have a 6 in the ones place and in the tenths place, this has a 2 and this has a 4. So the greatest place value where the digits differ is the tenths place. Because this has a 4, it is the greater decimal. These both have a 2 in the ones place, a 0 in the tenths place, a 5 in the hundredths place. So the greatest place value where the digits differ is the thousandths place. And this has a 9 in the thousandths place. So 2 and 59 thousandths is greater than 2 and 54 thousandths. Now if you look at these decimal numbers, we have a number missing here and here and here. And we can find the unknown digit to make each statement true. And we can stack them with their decimal points lined up to make it easier. So 2 and 48 hundredths is greater than this number, which is greater than this number. If we stack them up, we can see they all have a 2 
in the ones place, they all have a four in the tenths place, but this one is saying eight, then the missing number, and then six. And the missing digit must be a seven in order for this to be true. For this one, three and 155 thousandths is greater than this number, which is greater than this number. If we stack them, we can see what's happening. They all have the same ones, tenths, and hundredths, but look, it's saying that this one has a five in the thousandths place, this one has a three in the thousandths place, so what would be the middle number? Well, that would be a four. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Now, we have seven and thirty-two hundredths, then we have a missing digit in this decimal number, then we have seven and three hundred thirty-five thousandths. When we stack them, this one is less than this one, which is less than this one. So the greater numbers are going down. It's starting with the least, and then it's going to the greatest. We compare what they have here, and this one has an extra digit. And we can actually put zeros here to help us and to help our eyes. In order for this one to be the greatest, that digit must be a three. then that would make sense. So sometimes adding zeros to the end of decimals that have less digits can help us. And a mathematical sentence that compares two expressions using these symbols, less than, greater than. This one means less than or equal to. This one is greater than or equal to, and this is not equal to. These are called an inequality, and we'll learn more about these in sixth grade math. And remember, adding zeros to the right side of a decimal won't change its value. We have four in the ones place, ones in the tenths place, and then this one only has two digits, this one has four digits, but it's got zeros here. We learned in video 3.1 that the only difference between these is that these are in smaller pieces. We have one hundred thousandths, where this is one-tenth. So the same amount of area would be shaded, but this decimal would have it in smaller pieces. If you're confused about that, you can see video 3.1 that's linked in the description. So 4 and 1 tenth is equal to 4 and 100 thousandths. And it's important to use precise math language for the terms and symbols we use. This is less than, this is greater than, this is, is equal to, and a decimal point is read as and. So we have four and sixteen hundredths is greater than four and six hundredths. You don't want to say bigger because if I said which one is bigger, you'd say, oh, well, those numbers are bigger. They're bigger in size, not value. So make sure you say greater than or less than. And we learned in the last chapter about division that we can turn a sheet of lined paper sideways to keep place values in their correct column. We can do it for addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, and we can do it for comparing decimals. It'll help us line up the decimal place values if you don't have a place value chart. In our next lesson, 3.4, we're going to use place value to help us round decimals. I hope I'll see you there. and. Like always, I'm proud of you for watching math videos, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.